Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, we have uh, Todd standing here. Uh, needs uh, no introduction, obviously. Um, Todd, if uh, if you want to, you know, just maybe start off by telling us a bit about yourself. And uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, I've been researching for over a decade now uh, to move forward the discovery process of the species commonly referred to as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. So I take people out into the field. I've been doing this for about uh, six years specifically where I take people out and show them Sasquatch. Started with Survivor Man. He's the one that inspired me to initially do it. And now I do it every year for uh, pretty much starting in June and ending at the end of October. I take people out one weekend, one week out, show them Sasquatch, film it, uh, gather evidence, uh, build up research teams. Uh, it's really, <clears throat> my, my dream has been to have a full-time research center and this year we're close to it, where I'll have a full-time sustainable presence out there monitoring the behaviors and, and, and different signs that the Sasquatch are leaving behind when they're happening, different individuals creating different relationships. Cause this is, uh, it was it was Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall that were, were really instrumental in, in primatology, obviously. And I'm trying to make multiple people like that, not just Todd Stanning, but other individuals that uh, have their own way of getting success in relating to this incredible species, uh, just to help move the discovery forward as quickly as possible. And, and all that's happening, it's, it's, uh, it's mind blowing. I directed and starred in the movie Discovering Bigfoot uh, part two, or part one, part two is coming out. <clears throat> and I made that movie to help, again, facilitate and move forward with the discovery process of this species, which, which I believe you know, there's at least in North America, there are millions of people that, that know the species already exists, probably at least hundreds of thousands that have, that have seen them and, and are aware of them. And it's, it's time for this, uh, time for this to manifest. It's you know, human beings, we're ready for this discovery right now. We're just ready enough, I think. And, uh, and I'm very excited to, somehow I'll be a part of it, even if it's not me specifically that makes this discovery precipitate the next few years. Uh, I, when the discovery happens, I'll be ready to help fish and wildlife and, and even help the world understand what needs to move forward with this very, very special and extremely unique species. Yeah, no, that's a great introduction. And um, yeah, so uh, if you guys want to start filling up the chat with all the questions you have, uh, yeah, get going on that and we'll start asking away. Expect some smart questions with some university minds here, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have a lot of science people uh, in the club too. If um, if uh, yeah, no, they um, they always have some pretty great questions for uh, for whoever we have out. So, but um, I thought you know maybe uh, if I could start with one of my own. You said um, sure. uh, you know, you're having some uh, really you know significant teams going out there uh this year and it's going to be a really big year for you uh can you tell us a bit about that and who you're having out and and why this year exactly is going to be this much bigger and better uh i can't i can't name this i can't name the names right now because we kind of uh we're coming out of left field with it i want to shock people it's really just you know it's it's primatology and anthropology like these these great men have been hearing about me for years and I, I keep, I kept saying to them, don't take my word for it. Come out with me. I'll show you a Sasquatch. And, uh, you know, they've sent out their little minions to start with. The minions go back and go, this dude's real. Like, this is legit. You know, not just, not just like PhDs like Jeff Meldrum and John Bernagel and Survivor Man, but their, their specific people have come out with me last year <clears throat> and they're all, this is legit. Like this guy is totally legit. This is real. One of, one of the minions saw a Sasquatch last year. It goes back to his, his uh, you know, PhDs have their people, right? Yeah. But, you know, their students, their undergrads, and all the people that are working under them, amazing people. One saw a Sasquatch. He went back to his his mentor and teacher, a very, very famous, I just, I, you know, I, I shouldn't even hint about it because people will figure out who it is. Yeah. But, you know, <clears throat> this guy is like, in disguise. The, the other thing too is, these are tough people. I don't mean any disrespect, but a lot of a lot of PhDs are not boots on the ground. They can't handle getting out into the backcountry wilderness, which is tough. And that's been the biggest problem for me is, uh, you know, people got to be tough. They got to get out backcountry. You got to go kick some ass. You got to, you know, there's bears out there. There's mountain lions that'll hunt you. You know, you got to stay calm and cool when a pack of wolves comes through because they're giant and monstrous and terrifying, but they're not going to harm you. And you got to keep a, a cool head with all those things. And even, even trusting me as a guide to, to keep them safe. That's, that's a relationship that needs to be built through trust. 
and uh and i have all that going on so even even jeff meldrum's coming back you know survivor man can come back if he wants to so the, the relationships i've already built are already sitting there too so what i'm using what i can say is jeff meldrum the phd from uh idaho state university oh, uh, he'll, yeah. he'll come back when uh when there's something when there's a video that's what i've been waiting for is when there's a new yeah. video something incredible new amazing piece of evidence I'm going to fly him down like in an emergency, even if it's on a weekend and uh, just get him to do the investigation and conduct that. And we're, we're ready for all that stuff this year. I've been, I've been moving really cautiously because I've made mistakes in the past and uh, you know, specifically with gorillas, it takes eight years to earn their trust. And it's, it's been that much of a hard road for me. In fact, I had their trust and I lost it by uh, pushing the envelope too hard. I'll say, I'm much more experienced. I mean, I, I had eight videos back in 2017. What do you think I have now? I'm way better. I know way more than I ever have. So uh, it's, it's and, and this particular troop of Sasquatch are interacting with me and they're really, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're exposing themselves in ways like I've never even heard of because this, this, this may be one of the best relationships between human beings and Sasquatch that's ever existed. Diane Fossey did that for the first time with gorillas. You know, Jane Goodall did that for the first time with her chimpanzees, facilitated a relationship with a troop that resulted in the most incredible discoveries, you know, that are ongoing to date. So that's happening with the Sasquatch, with the way I've, I've kind of combined the science and my love of, of truth with, uh, with you know some Cree native tracking and some spiritual connectivity stuff that Jayan Fossey and Jane, Jane Goodall did, they were like that. If you ever if you ever met Jane Goodall, she's extremely spiritual. She's very connected to the earth, and, and that the science really appreciates. But it's something I've had to work on as a person, as a human being, to get my life in order that way, so I can help garner the the success that needs to happen to facilitate this discovery. Wow, no, that's interesting because we haven't. Um... We haven't really had anyone come out and uh, talk about, I guess, that aspect of a uh, connection with Sasquatches and, and, you know, the role that plays. Um, we have a few questions now for you. And uh, um, Joel raised his hand. If you, if you want to go first, Joel. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, okay, so my question is just about the... Um, court case i think it was in 2018 against the the minister of forest lands natural resource thing in yep. british columbia yes um so I, i'm just wondering um because like the the evidence um would be enough evidence to convict someone of a murder case we have video evidence photographic evidence you know lots like hundreds thousands of witness testimonies yes uh, i'm just wondering if um you know the government uh, or uh, I, I'm not entirely familiar with the specifics of the case, but mm. I'm just wondering if it's like if they're ignoring the evidence purpose purposely or they're mm -hmm. trying to cover it up or they're just, you know, denying it out of ignorance um, or, not or out, out of, of, not or out of ignorance. just not not just wanting it to be true. Well, they, they told me right straight they were never going to let that go to court. I'd have Jeff Meldrum. Uh, testify and when they saw the witness list I had I had judges I had PhDs I had wildlife officers that had seen them like testifying never mind the DNA never mind the the dermal ridges and the fingerprints and Jimmy Chilk all this incredible evidence it was it was so overwhelming I I, I literally told them too like you know I, I could have witnesses for for 20 years just line them up out the courthouse like incredible amazing people will tell their stories so uh, but they 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 told me they would never allow it and they didn't. They would never allow it to get to trial. They told me they'd postpone it. They're lawyers, right? They have their ways. They told me they'd break me with postponements and adjournments. They wouldn't even, they, they wouldn't, when the trial started in eight years, they go, and if you're ready for that, eight years, then we'd postpone that trial another 10 years. We'll, we'll, we'll give a whole new precedence to adjournments and postponements where you want to go for 20 years? And I smiled and said, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. So, uh, but, but what I really learned, this is the most important thing I learned out of all of that was, so they, it didn't go to trial because there was no precedence for such a case. And I went in with evidence and it wasn't about evidence. You have to show a judge there's precedence for a reason for him to let this go to trial. So I went into what I thought was a knife fight and they showed up with guns. So I wasn't ready. 
So my lawyer wasn't ready. Supreme Court is a disaster. I don't have much respect for the justice system, to be honest. I can't even speak. I wasn't allowed to say anything. But what I learned that was so important is if Fish and Wildlife ever says Sasquatch don't exist, I, I can sue them immediately because I do Sasquatch research for a living and they're saying I'm a fraud. Now it's, now it's forget even Supreme Court, civil court. So if you ever call Fish and Wildlife or even, even the lawyers that would come down and talk, I would ask them, is Sasquatch real? Tell me, like, just make a statement. What's the statement? And every single time I'd call Montana, I'd call California, British Columbia, Saskatchewan. They all said this, no comment. Ask them if unicorns are real. They'll laugh. They're not real. Huh? Is, the, is, the, is a banshee real? There's no such thing as banshee. Is Bigfoot real? No comment. Click. That's powerful. So you're going to have to derive, because I don't have information behind the scenes. I do, but it's, it's paranormal. And I don't want to make this paranormal. This is real science. This is a real discovery process. So you're going to have to understand if an indigenous people were discovered, which is what they are, that they're sentient, if they were discovered natural indigenous people that are from the land that have always been there do you think what are they going to do with their land rights what about logging and and strip mining and all the natural gas that we do it would cost we would lose trillions of dollars i don't even know where we begin with that and that's follow the money and that's probably where the problem in lies and i don't care about that stuff the species exists if we have to make special laws i don't want to stop logging the industry has to go on I have a house with wood in it. I'm not a hypocrite. So, and they are out there right now and we can find a way to, to, you know, find some equilibrium with this, but they exist and the discovery is happening. I'm going to fight for it and I don't care what it takes. And, 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 and it's coming. People are, people are in the know. It's, uh, you know, they did it. They did a survey in the United States. One in three Americans believes Bigfoot is either real or very probably real. That's over a hundred million people in the U S alone that, that know this discovery is here or at hand. And uh, those numbers are huge. And th that's, that's the people I have to convince. I get 100 million in the US, you know, maybe 5 million here in Canada. I don't even need scientific recognition. I get those people behind me and I'll facilitate this discovery to move forward. And it'll be, it's, it's amazing too. It's not, we're not dealing with, no disrespect, but we're not dealing with chimpanzees or gorillas. These are, these are hunters. These are cold weather, brilliant beings that are immensely spiritually connected. And human beings are really, ready for this discovery you know and i i've seen what it takes and i understand that the reason that sasquatch aren't discovered is because they're so amazing they're so absolutely amazing science wasn't ready 20 years ago right now we're studying extrasensory perception we're studying uh the ways that empaths work and this is real stuff they're doing it in psychology you you university people should know this i took it 15 years ago, they were starting to talk about the realities of extrasensory perception and remote viewing. That's, that's it. That's it. The Sasquatch have always done that. They've always had, you can't sneak up on them. They can feel you there. They can sense your presence, you know, and they're teaching this in schools. Now they're, people are talking about this all the time. The CIA did this. Princeton university studied remote viewing. The Sasquatch can remote view. They're the best at it. Their extrasensory perceptions. They can feel your intent. You can't hunt them. You know, they'll, they'll sense that coming a mile away. And this is, this is not, paranormal anymore and that's what we needed for this discovery to move forward is to understand there's a species out there that really they can communicate through telepathy to, to one another they're in constant communication with each other through this mind telepathy and we have these abilities just not nearly as good as they do so and they're so connected to the wilderness and nature there's so many levels of how it's been so easy for them to evade us but this discovery is, it's, it's not like you think. We're going to learn so much from it. Dolphins are amazing, you know, orcas or whales are beautiful, incredible creatures. But this is a, this is the most man-like primate that's ever existed. They are literally, the DNA shows them as, a, as a, the same species. We could literally interbreed. We have interbred and produced viable offspring. It's in the DNA. That's how far ahead we are with the science of this. So it's, it's an incredibly important discovery. And it's going to change the world in really, really beautiful ways. Can you imagine if we all got so connected, we had that ability to communicate like telepathy and could feel each other's feelings through full on empathy without any confusion, the level of honesty and truth and integrity that come out of our species. It's mind blowing. And they teach this, they do this. The more I'm around them, the more it stimulates my brain to feel that extra sensory perception. And people have been talking about it forever. And I see the evidence of it and the reality of this feeling and this, this, is it spiritual though? I, you know, I call it a spiritual connection, but it's really, is, is it spiritual that a dog can smell scent particles? 
and follow an animal like that? It's not. That's science. And when a human being can feel those scent particles, he's just using a sensory perception to follow and track. It's, you know, it's amazing, you know, and the fact that we can understand this and learn this, uh, the, the discovery is much bigger than we ever thought, guys. And, uh, and that's why the government has been very, uh, you know, difficult about this discovery because it's, I, I don't even have an answer. What do you do when you find an indigenous people? There's, there's like 15,000 of them out there, you know? So there, there are literally thousands and thousands of them. And we, there's no argument the day a gorilla becomes senjit, you can't put them in zoos anymore. The, a gorilla has land rights when they're senjit, but they're not. And there'll be no debate over the senjits of this species, none at all. And how do we proceed forward? It's scary, but we have to do what we have to do because they exist and they're real. And I'm, this discovery is happening. And whatever falls out from it, it'll be, it will be great. And I am excited about it. But yeah, that's crazy stuff. Um, it looks like we have um, a few more questions and a few hands raised after that, uh, of course. So um, I think, Matthew, if you, I think you raised your hand first, if you'd like to ask your question. Uh, yeah, sure. So I was actually really glad you brought up the ESP stuff because that's actually something I've looked into myself. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, do you think that, like you brought up, for example, how dogs and dolphins have different sen senses than us just yeah. through adaptation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you think that humans have the same or a similar level of ESP as Sasquatch? Or is that kind of something they're they're born with? Or like, is it environment because they're raised in a more natural environment and they're not like polluted? Or is it they're actually just born better at it? I, I born better, but then, you know, the, the, the pineal gland is cleaner because they're drinking cleaner water. They have less toxicity. I mean, how many of you guys eat organic? You literally eat pesticides in your food and you're cool with that. Your water is full of all sorts of gar. Like I can't even believe the garbage. I live in Calgary. Our water is awful, you know? So the stuff that we're, that calcium, calciumifies up and clogs all your body environment is damaging, but there I've also, <clears throat> I have to admit, even third eye spies is a good movie to watch where that's where Princeton and the CIA started talking about remote viewing, which is totally tied in completely the same as extrasensory perception. And uh, I, I've met individuals. I work with individuals that are just gifted. Some people are stronger, faster, you know, maybe a little smarter, maybe a little more sympathetic, maybe more narcissistic for what they need to do. So uh, of course that exists, but uh, I, I would, I would actually compare it to maybe a sense of smell. You know, I can't smell nearly as good as a dog, but I can smell. Right. So uh, so, and if we, I don't know, but you can't really work on your sense of smell. So there's so much to learn about it. I'm in my infancy to do with it, but I, I can, what I can say is I can see people that are far more gifted than other people, which should be obvious that's going to happen. And, uh, and we, we even need to, when you practice that gift, even with your mind, you work it out, you think, you study, you read books and you get smarter. If you don't, if you're lethargic and lazy, so it's all these, it's environment, it's the work that you put into it, it's what you were born with, you know, and, and the Sasquatch live in an environment where it is survival of the fittest. We're so done with that. We're, uh, we're so domesticated. I have like my little the joy of my life is my little girl. She wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for a medical. She was born, you know, six weeks early. So it's when it comes to a Sasquatch, not only are they tough and survival of the fittest, but they live out in, the, in that wilderness where the winters, I mean, we're Canadian guys. Those winters are harsh. You got to be a beast to survive that stuff as a one-year-old and two-year-old. So you're dealing with an elite level of, you know, survival of the fittest that we just don't, we just don't enjoy that anymore. We're so domesticated. And, and um, so they are, they are very, very, very powerful that way. And uh, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. So that, that overall health, that overall incredibly clean environment, you know, eating that fresh food that they do and drinking from those beautiful glacier runoff creeks, or do they, some of them, you know, might be having polluted rivers and getting messed up as well, like we are. So, cause the environmental impact of what's going on right now with what we're doing, it's everywhere. A survivor man told me about, he went to an isolated Island in the middle of nowhere and there's garbage all over the beaches, just washed up. It's an island way out in the middle of nowhere, the South Pacific. Nobody's there. And so, so it is affecting us everywhere. It is the, the damage we're doing is affecting them. So, which is why this discovery is also important because we need to reconnect with nature in beautiful ways. Doctors are prescribing people to walk around barefoot in nature to balance out their electrochemistry. You know, like getting into nature, the expeditioners I take out, that changes their life when they spend a week away from civilization. 
the way they just reconnect and and pl- unplug and find their natural self and and that's what we are literally the masters of civilization and the sasquatch have evolved to be masters of nature in the natural world they walk around barefoot they're never disconnected they have an understanding that's brilliant and crystal clear and and i want to learn about that and i bet you there's hundreds of millions of people more that even even as domesticated as i am i want to learn about that and i want to i want to feel that stuff so it's uh it's very very powerful and uh even, even we could, we all get it a little bit. This is something I tell anybody when you want to talk about ESP. Anybody will, will agree to this. You ever been sitting in a spot, you just relax, nothing going on, and you literally just suddenly look and there was a person staring at you. How did you know they were there? And you didn't look like, oh, you're one. You looked with intent. Not only did you look, but you knew where to look. As we know about stereoscopic sight and vision, you can't know where to, you can't see depth. So we can literally have, we literally have extra sensory perceptions with it's stereoscopic where we can tell where to look. Who hasn't done that? I've never had anybody say, oh, I never did that. We've all done it. We all have a certain level of it. And the more we train it, the more we clean up the pineal gland or the pineal gland as it's called, the third eye. And this is, this is, this is stuff that goes way back into Buddhism and, and, and Hinduism about the third eye. It's real. It's really there. And it really makes a difference. And I bet you we're going to find out that the Sasquatch have this incredible pineal gland. It's huge, right? If it's the, whatever part of the brain is responsible for ESP, it's going to be huge. And the more we stimulate that, the more we get around other people that stimulate that, the more we practice it, the better we'll get at it. And I'll tell you, can you imagine how, I don't even know how I can express how you can imagine what it would be like where people couldn't lie to each other anymore. Courtrooms would be empty disputes would all be over we could actually be honest with one another and really communicate through you know through our, through our hearts and through our minds and there, there's nothing to hide from one another i mean what i want to live in that world as that would just be so amazing where we could connect like that where we could really understand that we not just by science but by our own extrasensory perceptions we are all connected to one another we do sh- we do share a similar source where we get inspiration from and where we can all collectively get into and uh, it's what an amazing future. It, it's, it's a revelation for mankind. And they teach this. They do this. I'm a student of theirs. And uh, it's part of the reason I wake up early and stay up late every night because I, 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 I want this future for humanity because I'm scared. I'm scared for you guys. You know, with the planet we're leaving you for you guys, it's not looking good, is it? It's pretty freaking scary. And, and this is all I can do to facilitate change as best I can is to you know inspire people to get back to nature because in nature is perfect equilibrium. That's where we, re- when we reconnect with nature, when we understand how nature works, then the planet survives and thrives in abundance. And we're not doing that right now. Oh, thanks Todd. Um, I think, uh, Kyle, did you have your hand raised? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, we'll Again. go over your question then. A uh, quick question for Ryan. So when you created this club, uh, did you have people doubt you saying this will never amount to anything and it wouldn't get as big as it would? Or like, what's your comments on that? Oh, yeah. It's funny you have a question for me. That's actually... Um, <laughs> yeah. I have that question too. I don't get any questions. But um, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, we didn't really have any expectations when we started, I guess. But uh, uh, I guess, it, you know, it has gotten really big and uh, even even if we don't have everyone out at the meetings every week, you know, there's still so many, you know, different people at the meeting each week and so many different people that get to see all the work we do. It's, uh, I don't know, it's really special. And I think uh, it's just great. Everyone's getting to learn about this because, you know, it's so cool. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> uh, we have a few more in the chat. Um, What does the permanent presence for Sasquatch research look like? That's uh, the next question we have. <clears throat> well, uh, th- it, it looks like people going out to all over, all over North America and, and learning from them, becoming like my success is because I'm a student of theirs. They're my teachers, literally. I have nothing to offer them. They, they completely reject technology and civilization they understand the day they pick up an axe or they start to make a fire, they walk down the road to civilization that removes them from nature and they want nothing to do with that. They're actually conscious enough to understand that. So, <clears throat> so the future is what, what I'm preparing for is I'm training people 
all over. I've got Alabama, Texas, Florida, New York State, you know, Washington State, all these people that I've trained up and they're ready to go out there and identify Sasquatch areas and then allow people to come in and become students of these teachers because it's, I mean, to learn from them and to even, even that, that old adage, it keeps coming up for me when the student is ready, the master will appear. And that's exactly what the Sasquatch do. I go out there as a good student and I learn to love nature, appreciate nature. And when they want me, when they see that I'm ready to go to the next level, they, that piece of information comes to me. And as a teacher, as a father, I understand that concept with my daughter and with my students, I understand that concept. And they're literally that far ahead of me being a, literally, a, there's nobody argues I'm a wilderness expert. I spent thousands of days in the back country. I know this, I know the ecology, I know bears, I know mountain lions. There's, it's not a coincidence. I've survived unscathed. I take, I, I've taken out a hundred people into the back country and never had anybody get harmed. So there's a good reason for that. And with all the experience and knowledge I have, I'm literally like maybe like a five-year-old Sasquatch child. You know, they're so far ahead and they just keep giving me this information right when I'm ready for it and leading me in different directions so I can learn something. I mean, they are, they are brilliant. I, this might be hard for people to accept, but that's why the discovery is not done because they are, they are absolutely brilliant, genius, incredible beings. And we're not ready. And that's why they're not appearing because as students, we're not ready. And that's my job. And that's what I want all over, all over North America, all over Canada, Sasquatch research sites. I'm not ready. <clears throat> I've literally probably got 40 people under me trained. It's not enough. Those 40 people are going to have to train 40 people to train, get a mathematician out here. How fast are people going to want to learn about this? And, and that's why I'm doing shows like this and I'm talking to people because when I'm right, and I will be right, when this discovery precipitates as it's coming, um, all the signs are there. It's happening. And when it does, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to deal with the demand. I literally have to do online classes, teaching tens of thousands of people how to go interact with the Sasquatch appropriately, not to drive them off, not to make the foolish mistakes that I made, not to, not to be human about it, to think in a different way, be nature about it, be organic and, and, and be a student and be humble. And that's how they'll come around and interact because it's time. They want to. Some of them want to. I would actually even compare it to the tribes of uh, the native tribes of North America, where you'd get the Cree and, and you'd get, uh, you know, the Algonquins and they'd be trading and good with people. And then you go over the Iroquois and they scalp you. There are Sasquatch tribes that want nothing to do with people. I'd say from my experiences right now, it's about 50, 50, where half the time they'll embrace me and interact with me. And the other half of the time they want me gone. They threaten to harm me literally. So we need to be able to differentiate between that because if they want to be left alone, they have every right to be left alone. And this, this, this will be very similar to the way we interconnected with the native people. We learned a lot of lessons, at least I hope we did. And I'd like to take those lessons and use that towards this discovery process. And, uh, and, and I think that's the best advice for that. So. Um. I actually had a, a question of my own a while back you um, mentioned about interbreeding like did you you know I haven't heard about uh, this before has is there any kind of record or, or stories mm -hmm. of humans interbreeding with Sasquatches well stories but the stories don't mean anything the DNA shows 19 times a human a, a human has bred with a Sasquatch and produced viable offspring that's gone back into the genetic chain and what was incredible about this this is what i love about this discovery process is as long as you stick to the truth no matter how painful it is it'll it'll show your you're being honest in the end so what happened was it's only on the female mitochondria side so a sasquatch and a human being would breed they'd produce a, a hybrid offspring half sasquatch half human but that offspring to breed back only a female would ever get back in never a male and now in a male dominated society let me ask you this if 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 uh when, when a female is born in a male-dominated society, when there's a dominant male, he's got his harem, and you got males running around that'll never get a female, I bet you that female is going to find a mate. But in a male-dominated society, when you're half human and you're weak, are you going to be able to beat up a Sasquatch to get a mate? Uh-uh. So it really, in the biology, it matches up 19 times. That has happened. And it's, it's, it's something I was very uncomfortable with in the, in the beginning because, you know, understanding the real... The reality of a Sasquatch breeding with a human being is pretty not cool. And even 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 biologically, 
we would damage them because we're so, in my opinion, we're so weak compared to them. I'd like to see a pure Sasquatch, you know, and I don't know if they still exist because multiple times over and over, the DNA shows 19 female mitochondria on the female side are our human DNA. So um, it's a fact. And, and I, this is this is Melba Ketchum's DNA that was, I have a copy of it. I've had other geneticists that are colleagues of mine read it and go, this, this is totally legit, dude. Like it was, it was done and then it was peer reviewed by other genetic laboratories that have incredible reputations. And I, I know for sure two of them said, this is legit, mm -hmm. this is real. We've, we've connected it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very uncomfortable topic, but I'm not afraid to broach things. I guess I get comfortable with it after a while because facts are facts. Well, I just love the way it adds up. It just makes so much sense, you know? So blows my mind. I'm surprised I haven't heard about that before. Uh, yeah, we haven't heard about that from any, any of the research we talked to. That's really, yeah. really interesting. I mean, I literally, I literally have copies of it. Just right over here, one of my like you know a big. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a you can order it and get a copy of it. So it's the Melba Ketchum study. She she tried to make it news a while, and Melba Ketchum is uh, she's a very. I'm trying to be nice about this. She's a very poor representative of what we need. So the scientists just discredited her, but you can't discredit the, the DNA. You can't discredit the work, and that's what's never been discredited. And that's what even she just she just took a sample and sent it out. You know what I mean? Like she's take, trying to take all the credit, make money from it. When real researchers got that, look who got those genetic samples. That's amazing. Like I, I've had a hell of a time getting hair samples. So that's what I did is I went after the people that got those samples and the man who paid for it all and facilitated it all to grow out, which was Adrian Erickson, who deserves all the credit. And, uh, but it, it just gets swept under the rug, right? It's, it's, man, it's not news when there's just always, if it's not COVID, now it's Ukraine. There's always, look over here, look over here, do, do this. Don't worry about that DNA because I was submitting that as evidence. And I was having a geneticist, PhD geneticist, come in and go, they're real. You can't fake DNA. This guy over here, you might say he faked the videos, he fakes this, he's fooling people. But he's not at home in a crock pot cooking up DNA because this is the other amazing thing about the DNA guys is, so if you have a, a scale, a sliding scale, let's say it's, it's going to be like, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans are over here, right? So everybody thought that it was going to be in between humans and chimpanzees. It's not. It's over here. There. So when people say I'm mixing human and chimp chimpanzee DNA, I'm not because it's not in here. It's over there. And actual, now when you think about it too, they're bigger, stronger, more advanced primate. They're a more of a hominid than we are. They're a tougher wilderness hominid. So it actually makes sense because when you compared the DNA to chimpanzees and gorillas, it was further away than humans. So it didn't make any sense until you stop putting it over here or stop putting it between chimpanzees and humans and realize they're a bigger, more advanced hominid than we are. So we're, we're literally in the middle of the scale, guys, between chimpanzees and Sasquatch. And that should blow your mind. Don't you want to meet a species that's literally further down the genetic chain than you are? I do. And I have, and they are that amazing. And I, I think that's what we're really going to find is you could literally take a Sasquatch and drop them in the craziest backcountry wilderness that's ever existed and come back in five years, he's going to have a fat belly. He's going to be having his feet up and chill. You could take the greatest survivor, survivalist in the world, like Survivor Man, and tell him he can't use technology. He can be dead in a month. Who's a better hominid? Who's a tougher hominid? Who's a better genetically designed hominid? I don't think the answer is very difficult. Yeah, no, that's like, that's incredible. I've, you know, I'm just surprised. Uh, I'm not a scientist myself, but so many people in the club are, and, you know, I'm sure they're, they're eating this up right now. I mean, uh, I know a few of our science people actually have some more questions in the chat over here. I'll get to, um, we have one, uh, it says, we've seen some pictures you've taken of Sasquatch and they look fairly different. Uh, why do you think that is? Male and female. You're looking at a, uh, Jake video five. He's got more of a beard. He's got a bigger, uh, got a bigger face. You know, even we've seen in gorillas, sometimes females don't have a sagittal crest. So the males are just bigger, hairier, more robust looking. And, uh, and, and their colors vary from dark brown to black. That's their color spectrum. So, uh, and I've only ever filmed, filmed a female once. And I think she was young when I filmed her. So she looked like her cheekbones were, but you know what though? She didn't. When you really look at, the nose and the cheekbones and the way the lips are across and, and wide 
and and it's most importantly the proportions you can literally so with a human being i don't know if the scientists know this but artists know this if you take my eye it'll fit right in the middle so i can have three eyes across that's the perfect spacing of every human being unless you're severely uh deformed with a sasquatch you can literally put two eyes in between their eyes so you can take their eyes and put two in so uh clearly some differentiation in there and again the pineal gland goes in between there that's what we always brag about you must have seen that that little third eye thing you the, the the in the money and you know in just people talk about it all the time so that leaves space for a much bigger pineal gland which means better abilities for you know extrasensory perception and and remote viewing and and that kind of thing so it's really uh it's scary how all the pieces fit to the to 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 give you this species that i'm not here going how come we haven't made the discovery like most of you are oh we should have done it we should have done it because the reason we haven't made the discovery is because they're that incredible every year they blow my mind i bring up brilliant men and women they're like oh my god these guys are just schooling us today like they just own it they get it they're when you think you're one step ahead it's only because you're so far behind that you thought you were ahead but there's there's just, uh, from, from my perspective, to be honest, though, there's much more similarities in their look. I, I can always get two eyes in between, right? <clears throat> the noses are different. Human beings have different looking noses, right? So th there's one guy I filmed, he has his nose kind of crook like this, and the other ones seem a little straighter. So, uh, but the, the cheekbones, the nose width, and the mouth proportions all match. So one of the Sasquatch I filmed, uh, his name is Kubota. He, he is... Uh, normally a male Sasquatch is around nine feet tall and he's not, he's like eight foot three. So he's, I, I think he's even got a hunch, a bit of a hunch on his back. So he is a little, he's definitely out of proportions, but uh, we have people that are taller, bigger, right? We have guys that are big and guys that are small. We have women that grow bigger and women that grow smaller. We have, we, in, in, in dogs, we have runts, right? So just when that happens with people, the proportions get a little different. And uh, I'll tell you, their bodies are the same. They move the same. The mid tarsal joint in the foot is there. The hands are the same. So what the problem is, is you're with, with a lot of my videos, you're missing most of the physiology and that's where it matches. The bodies are the same. The muscularity is the same. The arm length proportions, uh, the hair is the same, not fur. They have hair just like we do, full body hair. Gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, and human beings all have hair. We don't have fur. So and even other things in the biology that match up, like gorillas and chimpanzees hate the rain because they have hair. They don't have layers of fur, so it gets right to them. We don't really think about that because we're civilized. We live, you know, do you guys like the rain? Not so much. Sasquatch, when it's raining, they don't come out, just like the gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutans. You know, so all these things, they just fit so well. And I didn't know that until I started working with primatologists. I go, hey, the expedition will go great as long as there's rain. They go, why? I go, the Sasquatch don't come out in rain. And these guys are going, Neither do the chimpanzees, man. They will not, they'll literally, the gorillas get depressed during rainy season and damn near starve to death because they won't go anywhere because they can't stand the rain. They sit in a relief for a month, you know? And I got the same thing from the Sasquatch. They do not go out, they do not enter. I thought maybe it was because they didn't want to leave tracks and signs, but no, they're just miserable in the rain because they have hair and it soaks right through to their skin. And that's what I keep talking about the truth. You just keep talking truth and you, no matter how crazy you might sound, like the Patterson film, the mid tarsal joint and the way the, the, the Sasquatch walk actually proved the Patterson film was fake because there's no such thing as a mid tarsal joint until 1982 when they discovered it, the chimpanzees, right? For a heavier, musclier uh, primate. And then the inline movement doesn't make any sense. Humans don't move like that. But if you're bigger and heavier and that ball off your joint has to roll to be more precise to deal with that weight, you do walk in line. So all these things that disproved the Patterson footage back in 1967, because we didn't know, actually substantiate it as more proof to, to the point now where there's, there's five points that Jeff Meldrum makes that were not true then. And we know as facts now that there's no way cowboys, a couple of cowboys making a hoax could have done that. It's real science. The Patterson footage is absolutely real, guys. 100.0%. There's no chance it's been faked. Like the evidence is so, like if you saw Jeff Meldrum talk about it, you'd sh people just shut up. Like that is, the, I have, the track has a mid tarsal joint. They literally, they had no idea it existed in the anatomy, you know? And that's the Patterson, then they got tracks that day from that female. And it's a female, breasts are bouncing, 
like the 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 trouble and the 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 hatred that that Patterson film has faced it's generally considered fake it's completely real. It's totally authentic. And I've met Bob Gimlin, who was there when it was filmed, you know, and I understand his plight, his frustration, you know, because he was really there. He really saw Sasquatch. He has this incredible piece of footage. And, you know, people call him a liar and it hurts, you know, as a father, as, as a friend to people, when you're a good, honest man and people call you a liar your whole life, it's it stinks, you know, when 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 you're definitively telling the truth and you're just being honest about about what you saw. And that's what's been a big problem with this, this discovery is even with you and your club, I bet you face some scoffs, right? Some people laughing at you, but you know what you're doing? You're going around telling people that the world is round. They're like, nah, this guy's crazy. It's flat. It's literally, the evidence is that profound. It's that unbelievable. The evidence is so beyond any reasonable doubt. Any courtroom would just you don't even have to, in, in, in a day, I could have three people speak and present evidence and a judge would just go, why are we even here? This species exists. Like it's preposterous to think that this species couldn't exist, you know? And, and one good man out there, one police officer, one forestry officer should be enough for us. And we just completely discount them. I'm talking like a, a police officer in British Columbia who shot, fired shots in the air after he had his lights on a Sasquatch. Get out of here! And the Sasquatch turned around and walked away. This is an, a perfectly honest police officer, a sergeant who's never lied. He's a completely honest man. The guy, he, he got a phone call to come out there and get the Sasquatch out of this guy's house. Fish and Wildlife wouldn't go out there. They saw it three times. I'm not going out there. There's a freaking Sasquatch out there. Like This is really happening. It's a news story and you hear about it and then just don't worry about it. So what if this police officer who's a perfectly honest, true man, vividly has saw a Sasquatch, fired guns, shots in the air to scare it off after it had been there four or five times, after fish and wildlife had seen it. Like that should be the end. But we're such a dishonest species and we lie and cheat so much. We're so hoaxed that we don't believe each other, do we? And I think that scares the Sasquatch about us. I know they're real. But other people don't. Why don't people believe me? And as a species, they look at us, wow, you guys lie so much. You're so deceitful to one another. Like, that's a sickness. Maybe we shouldn't have much to do with you guys. Because it's scary to believe the... We, we're, so, we're so content with all the lies and all the, the, the garbage that we have to deal with every day that we just accept it. And it's not acceptable, guys. The, the, the justice system of lies, the way we cheat and the way we... Is COVID a conspiracy? Is it real? Are the people... You know what I mean? Like, who knows what the truth is? Can you even believe the media anymore? So much lies. You're almost, you're almost an idiot to believe the media at this point. Like, what's truth anymore? You know, you get excellent perspectives from both sides, but somebody's lying. And, and that's our species. And, and, and that can really change with, with the acknowledgement and the reality of Sasquatch. It's, it's that important. This isn't just some, hey, we found the new primate. It's nothing like that. It's not a Billy Ape. It's, it's an incredible, it's a paradigm shift in our species that will change us forever in, in ways that we are immensely in need of. Back to nature and, and, and honest and truthful with one another. Like the miracle of that is uh it has to happen we have to fight for this guys <clears throat> and it's coming yeah no that's uh it's really you know important what you're saying there and i mean yeah like we even had you know some of that in the club where people go all oh, like you know oh i thought this was a excuse for you guys to be you know drinking in the woods and like, <laughs> you know, like why do we need to go to the woods for that like but uh <laughs> yeah no but um it's it's, uh, it's important, and I think with each meeting we have, you know, more and more students, you know, start to realize it's really something important here and, mm -hmm. you know, to be taken seriously. And, you know, like yeah. our club's goal, you know, obviously we're in Peterborough, Ontario. I don't know if, you know, you're familiar with the area, but like mm -hmm. it's not the best place to be looking for Bigfoot. But, you know, we really stress <laughs> the importance of like, the, you know, the education side and that, you know, this mm -hmm. is something people should know about. And, you know, even people from other universities have come to me now and said we want to do something like what you're doing and, you know, mm -hmm. We, how can we do this and uh it's been really great and i think you know so many people are getting involved and really you know starting to realize the significance of this and i think uh, what you were saying also kind of goes with the next question we have here um what do you think the most meaningful thing we can truly learn from sasquatch is and how can we employ that in our daily life that's it's honesty it's uh it's it's empathy it's it's uh feeling and connecting to everyone around you, you know, like, uh, my daughter, like I, I, I practice and work on it. My little girl 
I can't believe the way uh, I, I was at a conference in Mississippi and I'm reading the email about Mississippi. And my little girl covers, colors up to me. She's three and goes, daddy, I want to go to Mississippi. I never said anything about Mississippi, little girl. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, daddy, that looks like a beautiful place. And I'm looking at pictures and she can't see it. I'm literally at my computer and she's down at my feet. But we have that connection. And to be able to communicate like that with her, I have, I have a, a relationship, a father-daughter relationship that's going to, you know, it's going to be so amazing where we're just so honest and truthful with one another. And, and why can't it go beyond that? Why can't I do that with my friends? Why can't I do that? Why can't I? Can you imagine getting out on a podium and speaking to millions of people and they feel your truth? They know you're honest because they feel it. Like it's to, to, to live like that, to know that that man up there is really talking from the heart. You know, is Trudeau like that? Is he up there talking from the heart? Because if he's lying to us, we'd know it. We could feel it. We go, oh man, he's the pharmaceuticals are behind him. They're pushing a drug on us. We can, you can't lie to us. Like I want to live in that world, you know, or maybe he really does care. Maybe it really is the right thing. So, you know, it's uh, getting to the bottom of things and just cleansing us and back to nature too. It's, it's both those things, right? Nature is so beautiful. We're so separated from it. I'm so scared about like, you know, kids are self mutilating social medias, turning people into like for me, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they're tools for you generation. It's not a tool. It's like a livelihood. Like it's, it's, it's too important to you. It matters too much. And I'm terrified about we're being domesticated too fast. All these drugs, Ritalin and all these antidepressants. You, your problem is your nature, man. Go back and connect with the woods. You're trying to separate yourself. You're living in this box of, of magnetic fields and you're not designed for it. A thousand years ago, you were hunting and connecting in the wilderness and you were meditating even though you didn't know it. And you were you were eating organic, wonderful food and, and, and in this wonderful place of Zen and you're not there anymore. We need to reconnect with that. So it's uh, it scares me, you know, the way people like you can't you can't domesticate most species. 80% of species will never be domestic. Moose, zebras, you can't ride them. You can't domesticate them. They're wild. But you can if you put them on drugs. Give them some antidepressants. Put them on some, you know, crank them up with pharmaceuticals. Suddenly you're riding that zebra, no problem. But is that right? No, it's not. That's not nature. It's not organic. <laughs> We're all like GMO. And I want to be organic, you know? So, and that that's the right way to be. That's the healthy choice. And uh, it, it all comes back and... You know, for me, I'm just a conduit for this incredible species to help facilitate this discovery and move it forward. And and now that this is happening and it's really happening, um, I just couldn't. I, I feel like I just uh, I'm I'm saving the future for for the, for the children out there, for all the parents and people who care so much about this planet. So, because what can we do? Well, we can support the Sasquatch. We can show what the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch will pass all the tests. The Sasquatch will do things they already do. The stuff that we've even just simply uh, trackers, those old Indian trackers that would follow anybody anywhere. Nobody's ever figured this out. You know what they're doing? They're following the scent particle energy. So you can literally feel with your left side, you can feel the energy of a particle the same way a dog smells it. I was talking about that earlier. So these incredible trackers that are following people up through rocks and over everywhere, no matter where they go, they follow them because they're feeling your freaking energy, man. You can't shake this dude. There's scent particles on the ground. And he's feeling that. And, I've met native people that are better than that than some other people. So it's, this goes back to that question earlier about the gifts. There's some dudes that can just feel your energy and follow you like crazy. And that's a beautiful, incredible gift. But it's so, if you can feel trees like that. Trees are living organisms, guys. The stuff we're learning about fungi and mushrooms and, and animal communication even. The, the fact that animals really speak and they're saying things. There's a video, there's a woman named Anna Bachman who's speaking with animals. Like it blows your mind what she's capable of. And these are absolute undis undisputable. Look up Anna Bachman when she talks to a, a panther. She goes up there and animal communicates with this panther. And the, the people that are caretakers, the zoologists that watch this panther is like, she's really talking to that panther. Like he's really changed. He really has these thoughts. Yeah, animals are that amazing. And the way we disrespect them and treat them like they're vermin is, is a testament to a sickness in us. We've got to reconnect. We've got to understand that this is a, a planet that's full of beautiful species and we're a part of that. We're not the species. We're a part of it. And if we destroy the oceans, man, and we wreck our ecosystem, oh my God. I, and, and all I can do to change that is help facilitate this discovery, which is about truth and integrity and openness. You know, even, even gosh, the, 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 the way we'd all have to be so 
open and vulnerable. We can't hide anymore. Can you imagine? You're sexually attracted to a girl. You're going to see that. Your mom's going to feel it. Oh, ma, come on, get out of my head. But, but that transparency and that vulnerability will open up such incredible pathways of honesty and integrity that, you know, uh, my daughter can feel a guy and go, that guy just wants to use me for things I don't like. I want her to be able to feel that stuff. I want her to see that a young man's coming along. Boy, that's integrity. Oh, man, he, I like the way he looks at me and the way he has good, honest feelings for me. And, 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 you know, it's, man, what a happy life that is, right? To be able to feel somebody and be empathic like that with somebody. And, and, and if we could do that with everybody, if we could all have that connection, what a, what an incredible world that would be. So uh, those are the two things. Yeah, thanks. And um, we have a, another question here for you. Uh, oh, here it is. Um, what kind of evolution have we seen among Sasquatch over the years? Oh, I haven't been, I haven't, I don't know enough about them. Yeah. Actually, no, I do. There's one thing. They're coming out. The new generation. This new generation of Sasquatch are, they see people all the time. Airplanes are, all, airplanes are out like crazy, right? Since what, the 50s? They've been coming out now. It's like everywhere I go, I hear airplanes and they know that's people up there. The roads are everywhere. So what's happening is the new younger Sasquatch that grew up with people around and watch them and see them are interested in reaching out, you know, the olive branch, extending the olive branch. So there are particular individuals that want to meet people, that want to discover people and learn more about them. So they're, they're less conservative because there's so much more exposure to people. They don't have anywhere to go. We're literally taking up land from them at an incredible rate, right? Every loss of habitat for them equals, it must equal loss of life. I can't see another equation for it. So we keep taking habitat and they're not pushing back, but I believe they're reaching out. And I know people that are having incredible interactions with Sasquatch, you know? I believe there's a lot of people that are very xenomorphic that you know hide away and are on their own and are having incredible relationships with the Sasquatch, but they don't let that get out because they 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 don't believe, as I believe, that this discovery is in the best interest of people in Sasquatch. They believe that human beings will harm and kill and destroy the Sasquatch, and they're trying to preserve and protect them because they don't have faith in their species. And I do. Not I'm 51% for this discovery, 49%, maybe it shouldn't happen. But the end, what shifts me to know that this discovery needs to happen is because I'm such a powerful proponent of the truth. I grew up with justice and the hall of justice and Superman and Batman and believing all that stuff. And I've been through the justice system and it's not like that guys. It's not, you know, it's very money oriented. It's very greedy. And, uh, it, it's, 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 it's not like you think it is, you know, justice is getting washed away and it, the integrity is not there anymore. And we have a responsibility to go and fix that as best we can. Can you imagine no more lie detector tests? Literally, you could walk into a room and five people are reading you going, you killed that man. I could see it. Even to the point where, and this is this is like, you know, Tom Cruise did a movie about it where he was seeing the murder before it happened. If this kind of ESP is actually, I'm sorry, but it's legit. Like when people say deja vu because they've been seen in the future, it's because they have. Like this is the level, uh, this is not even paranormal anymore. People are really, scientists are really working on this stuff where time and space is, you know, it's not as separate as we think. When you have an extreme thing happen, those signals can go back to you in the past. You can feel that energy for yourself and know it's coming, you know, and uh, I, I believe the Sasquatch can do that. I saw I, my native teacher did that. He would predict things that are about to happen and he did it all the time. And it was mind boggling how it was just this these incredible details, he'd say, don't do this. And when this happens, do that. And then it would happen. I'd be like, dude, that was like four hours ago and it was under the side of the mountain. How you know this is going to happen? Because he, he could have those premonitions. And uh, living in a world like that, it would eliminate courts and, you know, lawyers, liars. Should we call them liars or lawyers? Like, you know, what do you call a 10,000 good lawyers at the bottom of the ocean, right? A good start. It's a ve- and it is, I hate to say it, but it's a very corrupt system. Very, very corrupt. My children, who I love and adore, I keep talking about, were taken away from me for three years because of lies and deceit. When it all came out, my children were horribly damaged from it, you know? And uh, so it's, uh, it's I, I know there are good people out there trying to work in the justice system, but there's so much money, there's so much corruption. Um, and if we, I don't think anybody who had any integrity would say, hey, it'd be better if we didn't need this. 
that's really the bottom line, right? I know the people out there are going to be pissed off. Lawyers and judges are amazing and justice is so great. Okay, good. We disagree on that. But wouldn't we be better off if it didn't need to exist? And anybody who disagrees with that, that then I'm going to have an argument with you. Why can't we just be so honest and truthful and open and transparent and vulnerable that we just know what the truth is and we don't need to go through all the the, bureauc the bureaucracy and the, you know, is it even... <laughs> Can we even ever deny? Are, are, are you guilty or innocent? That shouldn't be the first question. How much money do you have? Oh, you don't have a lot of money? Oh, you better plead guilty because you can't afford a legal team and you can't get justice. I mean, that's our system. And anybody who doesn't think it's that way, I don't know where you're, you know, that's the truth of it. Basically, it told me, do you want to be a dad? Okay, how much money do you have? Not a lot of money. Ugh, probably can't be a dad anymore. Do you want to live in that world? Because that's the world we live in. I see it every day. Dads go, I don't have enough money to fight this. So I'm going to quit, lose my children. And the children lose the rights to have a father. So that's what's really been slowing me down in this research over the years is dealing with this family court system during the time that COVID was really rapid. And now that I've succeeded, you know, I want this, I, I want this new world. I want honest and justice and integrity. And, you know, I, I really believe in that still. I've, I found a new hope in it. With, as crazy as it is with the Sasquatch, I found a new hope in honesty and justice and integrity and transparency and truth and all these words that are, you know, are you a vaxxer or anti-vaxxer now? In the United States, oh, you're a Republican? I hate you, I'm a Democrat. They're trying to find ways to separate us. And this new knowledge connects us all, finds a way where we can understand each other and have sympathy for one another and respect our different beliefs and appreciate the differences in us. Not so much, no hatred, you know, no animosity, that can, you know, it can help facilitate the dwindling away of that, uh, which is so important to me. Yeah, that's really beautiful, Todd. Like, I don't know, but, you know, obviously it would be such a great world to live in. And like, we haven't, you know, thanks so much for talking about this aspect of Sasquatching to the students, because we, you know, we haven't had anyone like this that, no. you know, has an appreciation for them in this sense, you know? Mm -hmm. and it's it's really it's not it's not like people think it is the discovery is my my motives are not you should be shocked by it what do you mean he just wants to find the new gorilla no it's not like that it's so different and the, the things i'm seeing the stuff i've been like it's just crazy they know they know an area is going to be logged they're trying to communicate with fish and wildlife please don't log it and then they log it and i didn't even know i didn't know the air was going to get logged like th these 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 beings are brilliant they're so amazing I get, I get out there every year. My expeditions are like, man, these guys are like genius. They're so amazing with what they're teaching us and what they're doing. And, uh, and again, that's why the discovery hasn't precipitated because we're not dealing with some dumbass monkey, you know, and no disrespect to monkeys. I shouldn't have even said that monkeys are amazing. You know, primates are amazing, incredible species, but it's, this is really chimpanzee, human beings, Sasquatch. I'm, I'm trying to warm you up for what's coming. Really? And that's paleo DNA here in Canada. They did that. They proved that it's orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, human being, Sasquatch. Whoopsie. What's he doing over there? Aren't the more advanced? Aren't we over there? Aren't we the advanced ones? Apparently not. Civilization didn't do that for us. Domestication. Is domestication syndrome a good thing to anybody? Hey, I'm all domesticated. I don't know nothing about nature and where I came from. And I live in a pen. You think that's good? Not good. Reconnect to, we are from nature. We are a part of nature. Go try to not eat natural foods and see how well you do. <laughs> you know, and this reconnects us with that. So this is the layers of importance. You have no idea the Pandora's box you opened when you started this club. This is not just some simple little, oh, yeah. people used to tell me that 10 years ago. And I used to think, oh, you know, the discovery would be kind of cool, but you know, it's not going to mean anything. Yeah, it does. And the more I learned about it, the more I've changed spiritually, the more my expeditioners are changing in a, in a beautiful spiritual way, you know, and the more I learned about Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall, man, they're so, Diane, Jane Goodall is one of the greatest PhD scientists of all time. She's so admired and respected. And she's, if you asked her, I don't even need to ask her this. I already know she's going to say, what's more important, the science or the spirituality of this discovery? And she'll just smile and go, it was all about the spirituality. The science came way down below. And anybody who's passionate, who has a devotion to this, who can work hard for any part of the discovery, it's really, it's always, 
I could talk to anybody about that. A geneticist that works in a lab all day. Why did you work so hard? Why? It was that love. It was that, that, that passion. And that's the spirituality of it, right? That's the connection of it. <clears throat> they even, even inspired them to give them answers to questions they couldn't figure out. Where'd that come from? Where'd that inspiration come from? And it came from that spiritual connection that we, we deny and we don't talk about. It doesn't have to come through Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad. It can just, it, it can, but it can come through other ways too. The natives are talking about the same thing that the Dalai Lama is talking about when it comes to spirituality. Because that's because real truth is universal. And that's how deep this discovery is. You know, the Dalai Lama and the Sasquatch would get along like peas and carrots. <laughs> so. Um, the next question uh, we have here, uh, Shane asks, how long does Sasquatch live for? Well, I just think because of dentition, because of teeth rotting, I don't think they live much past 60. So I can't put a precise. And the other thing too is big dogs live a lot shorter lives than small dogs, right? So because of dentition and, and the hard lives they live and the size of them, yeah, I wouldn't even expect they'd make it to 60. So there's going to be obviously exceptions where maybe some will live to 70. I don't know. I get people talking like, you know, this stuff like fourth dimensional interdimensional, that's crap. Come on. They're a three-dimensional being, you know, they live to 500 years old. Come on, nothing does that. You know, like a turtle does that, they're reptiles. Give me a break. These are the most man-like species on the planet. Gorillas don't live very long lives, they're like 40 years old. So I would say maximum 60 years, like absolute maximum. That would really impress me, actually. I think, to be honest, it might be more around, uh, they don't brush their teeth, 40 years. What happens when your teeth rot and you get infections? You know, you're not going to survive. You can't chew your food. Bears die like that all the time because their teeth rot out. Can't, can't chew anymore. I find them dead, starved to death. So they do live in nature. And this isn't some supernatural discovery. It's amazing. And it's incredible. But they are still living beings, you know, and they have, they'll suffer from disease. They'll, you know, hard winter wipe out the not tough ones, you know, like they'll, they'll have that kind of stuff going on. So, um, so yeah, 40 to, 40 to 60 years, I would say. Um, the next question we have, uh, why do you believe the existence of Sasquatch hasn't been confirmed? It's just because they're so amazing, because they're so incredible. It's literally like a, the greatest hunter in the world. And I'm talking because I met some of the best hunters in the world. They would literally go out there and it'd be like putting, you know, a five-year-old in the ring against Mike Tyson. It's not going to be a fight. These guys know the bird sounds, the squirrel sounds, they know how the deers move. They know when the sun rises, the wind's going to change the wind gauge. They have, they have 10,000 advantages. But put all that aside, the moment you close that door of your truck, they're feeling your energy. They know what you're after. This guy's going to try to kill us. <laughs> Let's go over there, six mountains, because he's not getting over this one mountain where he thinks we are. See you later. You know, there's really, there's, there's no competition. The, I, I, I'm very convinced the majority, the vast majority of sightings are the Sasquatch literally showing themselves to people that they, they like and they think are special. They, most of the people, like these these uh, people live out in farms and, and acreages, they've been, the Sasquatch have been watching them for 20 years. I just saw a Sasquatch. Actually, he's been watching you since he was five. He saw you growing up. He sees you play on the swings. He finally decided to come out a layer of trees and let you have a look at him to see how you reacted. And what'd you do? You ran away, scared, yelling, screaming, terrified. I guess he's not going to show himself again. That didn't go well, right? So, um, and that's just, and even when I talk to people, the, when I hear about a Sasquatch sighting, I really believe it's authentic. The first thing I say is, congratulations, there's something special about you. And in a five-minute conversation, I'll hear this man or woman talk about how they love their tomatoes or their trees or their land. They tend to their goats. And they have this beautiful connection to, to nature, natural things. I'm like, no wonder the Sasquatch showed himself to you. And then I ask questions. Did anything else? Did you ever hear knocks? Yeah, I do hear that once in a while. Did you ever hear things or see things? that were? Yeah, I've been seeing that for years. Dad was seeing that. They've been around for years watching you, right? They've learned to trust you so implicitly. And then can you imagine, hey, I've been watching these people for 20 years and I showed myself and they freaked out and they screamed. They came out shooting with guns. Can you imagine how, they, how you would feel? Oh man, I like them. You know, those were some cool people. Now they're shooting at me. And that's human beings, right? So, and, and that's part of my purpose too, is very often I get to educate people. Don't go shoot at them. It's a gift. What if they try to harm me? Dude, if a Sasquatch wants you gone and dead, See ya. You're not going to be there. They're the greatest hunters that have ever lived. Greatest hunters and trackers that have ever lived. 
Like they'll get you if they want you. They're coming for you. Have a good day. The natives translation for it is if a Sasquatch wants you, take your last breath because they're going to get you. And these are the greatest trackers that we've ever known, the native people. And, and the term Sasquatch means wild master, right? What, what, what do you mean the native people who had this incredible mastery and lived here in equilibrium called them the masters of the wilderness? Must be something special about them. And it is. I actually know, I'm not going to say I believe anymore, that the hunting techniques and the spiritual uh, teachings of the First Nations and Native American people are based on the Sasquatch's teachings to them. I've seen it a hundred times. So the Sasquatch are literally the shaman that, teach, that taught the Native people about their spiritual and religious philosophies. Crystal clear to me now. I've been watching the Natives are hunting the way Sasquatch are doing, moving their feet, trying to move like a Sasquatch to hunt them. What the hell is going on here? And then I start getting feedback from really high level shaman going, if you want a, if you want a, a spiritual animal ritual, only a Sasquatch can perform that because they're at this higher level of spiritual connectivity. They're the teachers when you want to connect to nature. And that should be an incredibly bold statement. And all of this is going to come out. Geronimo knew it. Like the native people, big sitting bull knew it. They all knew it. If you'd ask them, they'd go, Sasquatch are as real to them as bears, as deer. They know they're real. They never questioned it. But you always had the white guy go there going, <laughs> rolling his eyes well you know all about the wilderness and you got this expertise but when it comes to that you're an idiot you know no they're not go to a reserve here in canada i'm going to nia bay in washington state a reserve out there <laughs> those people man they live and breathe sasquatch they see a sasquatch once a month out there they talk about it it's amazing it's a wonderful gift to them you know all the reserves i go to you make a sasquatch upset that's a sure way to get booted off a reserve they talk about it because it's in a way that's very real to them. Most people go out there and go, you guys are serious. You think there's a Sasquatch? Oh yeah, we don't, we're not going over there this month. There was a Sasquatch over there. We're going to leave him alone, man. He's got his little area. He's got some deer going on. We're not, we're not playing in that area because we respect them. They have all these incredible beliefs and, and mannerisms to deal with Sasquatch when they come around. And uh, it's, for me, it's, it's really nice to be in environments like that. I'm not, you know, trying to convince people or, you know, move them more towards being believers these native people that i deal with they know sasquatch are real period they know it and they they've they've been dealing with it their whole lives most of them have seen them you know so there's a there's another coin to it with people that are really out in the wilderness a lot but then you'll get hunters that hunt a lot and have never seen a sasquatch well what kind of hunter are you i'm a trophy hunter i go for the head sasquatch don't understand that man you go out there and you blow an animal away that's the worst meat. I don't know if you know this, but trophy animals are the worst, nastiest meat there is. You can't eat them. You want to get the young, tender ones, like uh, with beef or chicken. <clears throat> you don't want to eat an old hen. It's nasty meat. So trophy hunters go out there and shoot the oldest, nastiest animal, and then they cut the head off, which is the worst piece of meat. And to a Sasquatch, that's literally insanity. You just shot the nastiest animal and you took the nastiest part of it and you're letting it rot and the bugs and it's gonna like they're not gonna respect that and those are trophy hunters and that's why they don't connect with the sasquatch because it doesn't make any sense to them they don't respect that it's it's actually immensely disrespectful to to nature to do stuff like that <coughs> and that that's a big problem obviously so um, Joel, you had your hand raised, uh, if you'd like to ask your question. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. I just had, um, another question, uh, cause you probably have uh, a lot of experience with this. Um, I, I, I watched the, um, Survivor Man Bigfoot series and you talked yep. a bit about, uh, footprints. Um, mm -hmm. and we had another, uh, researcher on earlier first semester, mm -hmm. um, who talked about how sometimes when there's like his theory was when there's le a left footprint over and over again and no right footprint that they're, they're phasing into the fourth dimension, yeah, no. but uh, no, yes, I, I, I don't think that that's what happens, but I'm, I'm wondering that like a lot of the things that I've seen um, people find footprints that are like, like on a beach they're not mm -hmm. like 50 footprints in a line going in mm -hmm. one direction. they will be like three and then they're gone. And then there's, there's yeah. no more footprints. Um, like I'm, I'm wondering like, uh, where, where are the rest of them? 
<laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you a little. I, I just got to be quick because it's, it's a long lesson that I learned. Remember, you're dealing with the greatest trackers that have ever lived, ever. They play tracking games against themselves all day. It's their whole life, tracking and hiding. Mom's looking for me. I'm going to hide from her. Tra they, that's all they do. They're the greatest trackers in the world, tracking each other, playing with each other every day. So just as one example, all this thing happened where I finally, I was going to get footage of a Sasquatch. It was winter. Uh, the Sasquatch was, I had snowmobiles. I was going to chase him down, film the hell out of him. It's got nowhere to go. So I'm following his steps and he's running, running, big steps. Suddenly, and there's three of us on snowmobiles, and we got him. We got like five kilometers. He's not going anywhere. Suddenly, right in the middle of a field where there's a, one open area. It's all treed everywhere. He goes into an open area, and the tracks ended. Right in the middle. No more tracks. What the hell's going on here? So I look back at the trackway, and I go, wait a second. He's running. He's running. Suddenly, why did he walk when he was in the field? So something's going on in my head. So he's gone. I, I don't see him anymore. So I go circling around the snowmobiles. I find two tracks in the middle of the snow. This is where he was. Look, there's two tracks. I look up at the tree. I notice the tree doesn't have snow on it like the other trees do. You know what that bugger did? He walked into the middle of a field. He walked back into his tracks, jumped on a tree, jumped from tree to tree and said, see you later. I saw two steps because the distance between two particular trees was far. He had to jump down and make two steps and hit the next tree. And I know that because the two trees that he jumped on, all the snow's fallen off of them. You're literally, you got to understand you're dealing with the greatest trackers that have ever lived. You think you're one step ahead and they own you. And I've got 50 examples of that where they just are so damn smart, so smart. They'll do 20 and then they start cooperating. Forget about it. They're just so, so advanced. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's as simple as that. There is no fourth dimensional, interdimensional traveling stuff like that. I, and I've seen, I could go on all day about 50 different instances where I've been tracking them and they just own me. They just forget about it. They're so far advanced. They know so many things. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes just a fun game for them, you know, where let's follow me little, you know, you, you literally have to understand you, you're literally like a, a little kid for your intellect and you're dealing with mastery wilderness they're born and raised there they've been taught by the best in the world that's another thing is deer you know they teach a little bit they have to learn from their matriarchs but it's not like this these guys teach like at levels that are so high with their communication levels you know like they, they don't hunt young bucks for trophies they hunt the old bucks because they're so damn smart because they've learned from experience right that's why the trophies are the old ones because they're smart they have to learn through experience. The Sasquatch teach the same way we do. And they're always teaching. They're always learning. They're very communal. They love their, their, their young and their, their families and their family groups. So they're teaching and learning. And then iron sharpens iron, man. So to even, to even try to, for me, all I do is I'll follow a trackway for a bit. And then I just make an X over it. That's, that's their signal to them saying, I'm not following you anymore. I'm a good tracker and I can track you, but I'm not following you out of respect because you don't want me to follow you home. And that's what I do with a new troop of Sasquatch. And they come around much faster because I'm, I'm giving them respect and I'm showing them, you know, that I am humble and they are great masters and I'm not going to verse them. I'm there for them to come and interact with me. And if they choose not to, I'll never see one. Simple as that. So, and there's always a reason. Every time, I, every week I have somebody, oh, there was just this three and that two. And just give me five minutes and I'll just, they'll be like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And it never has anything to do with fourth dimensional traveling or that. That doesn't make any sense. A, a two dimensional being doesn't exist. You guys know the science. A two dimensional being can't exist on a three dimensional plane appropriately. You can't see it. You know what I mean? It doesn't there. Same thing. I understand. I, I studied physics in university. I understand how four dimensional planes work. You can't exist on that. It doesn't make any sense. It, 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 takes good scientists and makes them gravitate away from us. And I don't want that. I want to attract good scientists. So I don't talk jargon like that. I almost want to laugh, you know, well, we only saw a left track. So he was phasing it. I've heard stuff like that. And I'm sorry. I'll chuckle. <laughs> he was phasing in and out of the fourth dimension. Really? That's amazing. Wow. If, why was he phasing it out? Why did he just phase right out? Why did he just half phase? You know, half his body was in and half was in the fourth dimension. And this is just, this is the kind of talk that I feel really uh it discourages people from coming on board with 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 this kind of research 
because it's, it's just it's preposterous stuff to say there's always a good reason and they're just incredible i can't tell you how many times i've just, i'm going to track them this day i've done it a hundred times and they smoke me every time they embarrass me oh i got this new idea and i'm going to trick them with that the snowmobiles got them wasn't even close that dude i never got within 300 yards of him you know and i started at he was 400 yards away and i started <laughs> he just owned me so so does that help does that make sense Yeah, no, I think that was a really good answer to the question. And um, uh, I mean, next off, I uh, I have one of my own. And I was wondering, uh, you know, to, to go out in the world, you know, and look for a Sasquatch, where do you think the best places in the earth, really, uh, or on earth, I mean, uh, would be? Well, I, I like the Pacific Northwest. That's just my habitat, right? It's my home. It's my, it's where I was born and raised. It's going to be whatever you're attracted to. If you're born and raised and you love your ecology, you love your land like you should, you know, Ontario is a very different habitat for me. Very, very different. It would take me months just to go, what's that? Oh, that's this. Oh, what's this over here? Oh, that's a fire. I never saw a firefly before. You know, you have big, huge worms. I mean, it's different ecology out there. Just go where you're comfortable. They're going to be there. They're out there. You just got to get far enough out there. You know, recognize the signs, look, you know, have an open heart. And it's, it's not going to be quick. This is not some quick fix you're going to do in a week. So this is going to take, you know, I've, I've been doing this for over a decade. You know, is it almost, it's like 15 years now. You know, and I've, I've been devoted to this. Like I've been a full-time Sasquatch researcher for like 10 years where this is all I do is talk about Sasquatch, study Sasquatch, make videos about Sasquatch. And I just, I learn new stuff every day. So it's, it's, it's a husbandry that'll never end. They're still learning new stuff about gorillas and chimpanzees. It's incredible. You know, it just, it'll be, a, if, if you want to accept it as something like that, as a passion, that's going to be a lifetime, then get into it. In, 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 in Ontario, gosh, I've got uh, three guys out there doing really good work. I could hook you up with, you know, really good people. They're trained by me um, that have, you know, cool research stuff going on and uh, you know, just, uh, it's 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 basically my my number one suggestion is stand on the shoulders of somebody great stand on the shoulders of go talk to some native people go talk to just even find your own way you know find your own little inspiration it'll come to you if you want it it'll come to you just want it oh okay i'd like to start doing this and really think about it and just be aware of what's going on and just things will pop up stuff will come into your life gravitate towards it you know live your life like that live through inspiration feel that that life force energy drawing you to different places and what excites you and what brings you happiness and joy. Cause that, that's all I, I literally, I talk to expeditioners and I know the Sasquatch want them. I literally take expeditioners out because the Sasquatch are calling to these people and they find me. And then I'm a conduit for them to go out and interact with the Sasquatch. It's precisely what I do. I've had to accept that really in the past two years. Like I take people out and this one particular Sasquatch just is crazy about Ashley. She never, she never comes around, but she's there for Ashley. She called to Ashley. She wanted Ashley. Ashley was inspired to find me and email me at the right time. And then I took Ashley out there. And now Ashley's interacting with this incredible Sasquatch because that Sasquatch called for it. That's how powerful they are. Do you really see how I just, I feel like a tool, an instrument in the middle that just facilitates this moving forward. Also keeps me humble, right? So, because I am a student and I do have my Sasquatch that I have a good relationship with. but this it needs more and cooperation what this group about is about cooperation and cooperation is powerful as as a life philosophy as a mathematical principle the more you have the more people are pushing that discovery in a certain direction the quicker it'll it'll manifest and facilitate so i don't care who makes this discovery that's that's what makes me the heavyweight champion of the world when it comes to bigfoot if you make the discovery i i'm right and i win if i make the discovery i'm right and i win I can't lose. I am the heavyweight. You, all you're going to do is prove all my videos and all I've ever been saying about them is correct. So prove it. You know, I, I these the, the Sasquatch community loves to be competitive. I just smile. Go ahead and prove they're real. You're just going to prove everything I've been saying. That's all I ever wanted. I don't care who does it. I don't want a body to come in. I don't want to be shot. I don't want to start a war with them. But I don't think that's possible anymore. I don't think you could hunt and kill these guys. Just don't think it's possible. This is not. This is not a gorilla you're taking on. These guys can feel you, man. How do you beat something that can literally feel you coming and feel your presence? That they literally 
have been born and raised in that ecology. They know every rock, every tree that's growing, every mountain, every direction the wind is blowing. And there's many of them. And they all are communicating with each other at all times. You can't take that on. Like you're, you're, you're dead meat. And these guys throw rocks accurately. They move so fast. Like they're such athletically what they can do. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense how I've seen them do incredible endurance and run down an elk. And yet I've seen them move faster than a, than a, than a speed sheep, than the, the antelope, the fastest terrestrial animal here in, in, on the continent. You can't have endurance and speed, yet they seem to. You can't have the incredible power they have. It's just in the science, what I see them do doesn't make any sense. And that's because there's much more of this discovery. There's frequencies they're manipulating. There's things probably, they'll probably help us understand how they moved and built the pyramids, literally, through oscillating frequencies to make something vibrate in a certain way where it's lighter to move. I have literally have significant evidence to show they're going to be the ones that show us what the Egyptians knew how to do. That's how incredible this discovery is. I could go on all day about stuff that's going to absolutely just devastate you and blow your mind. The layers of what these guys are capable of. It's amazing. And so are we. If the Egyptians did it, we can do it. They can teach that. So, and I, and I have, again, evidence to substantiate these facts that I just look at it and go, how the hell did he bend that tree like that? Can't do that. Duplicate it. Break a tree like that. You can't do that. There's literally not enough power in a, in, a, in a machine that a man has built to do that. How are they doing that? And the answer is frequency manipulation. And people talk about this stuff. There's really good research on it. I have people that are doing frequency research calling me about Sasquatch going, yeah, I know. Really? They're the ones? Yeah, they do that. And I show them, that's exactly what the Egyptians did. So I have people that are literally the scientists that are working on how the Egyptians built the pyramid coming on an expedition going, I don't care about the Sasquatch. I want to see what they're doing with frequencies that's going to help me substantiate how they built the pyramids. That's stuff that's going on. That's the layers to this. It's like, you're just, you're just going to have your mind blown. The greatest minds in the world are coming out here because the evidence is so overwhelming. And, and when they come out, all they're going to see is a good, honest man telling them the truth. Watch it. Look at it. You can't, you can't fool these amazing people. When you, when you go out with Survivor Man, you're not fooling that guy. You're not tricking Survivor Man. He's brilliant. He is amazing. He is spiritual and connected. Everything that he saw was Sasquatch and absolutely authentic, without a doubt. And Jeff Meldrum and you know, all the people, I go on all day about all the people I took out. They are, they are my teachers. They're my mentors. To, to accuse me of hoaxing them or lying to them hurts my feelings. They're my teachers. I don't, you know, I admire these. These are my heroes, you know? And I, and I, I had, I had the, the wonderful gift in life to be, go out with these people and meet them and learn them and, and bring them joy and happiness. And Jeff Meldrum never saw Sasquatch before. He has now. Ask him. Yes, I did see a Sasquatch. Watch the movie Discovering Bigfoot. Everything that happened there is precisely real as it happened. Nothing is blown up or blown out of proportion. It's exactly the truth. That's why he'll keep, keep working with me. That's why Survivor Man will keep working with me. So because I just, that's how it is. That's how it's happening. The species exists. I'm not some masterful freaking DNA crockpot guy who's got a bunch of people in the bush and special effects teams working. It's just me. So, and just being honest and telling the truth and, and uh, facilitating the discovery, being a conduit to uh, something that is world changing. You have no idea. And th I'll tell you, I'm just looking through the little, I'm telling you all these things and it's so much more than that. So much more important. So what all I'll discuss with you is what I absolutely am certain of, factually know. So go make this discovery and, or help make this discovery, go make it your own journey and you'll grow and change and evolve and become a, you know, a better human being when you start, you know, realizing what's going on and start connecting to it. If you just went and studied nature and understood nature, you, you grow and change connecting to it. I mean, what, what, what we're learning about mushrooms. Have you seen the documentary of Fantastic Fungi on Netflix? Like, it's amazing, dude. The stuff that we know about fungus and plants and mushrooms. And, it's, and that's just the mushroom. No one's done that incredible documentary about trees and how they're interconnected and the life force energy that they, the age and the wisdom and what they've seen, the energy they project. It's, uh, 
nature is such an incredible gift. And the more we separate from it, the more damage it does to our species. And that's, that's, what, that's what big pharma wants, don't they? They don't like healthy people because you're not buying medication. And they're trillion dollar companies now. You know, the big oil companies, they don't want us using environmentally techniques because they, their, their oil that's worth trillions becomes worthless. You know, and if you don't think that's the way the world works, if you think that these big corporations have your best interest in mind, I don't even think I can help you. <laughs> it's about money, right? We need to get away from that paradigm. We need to cause this shift where it's, it's not okay to do like that and to live like that. What about what's right? What about what's honest and moral? And that's, that's just been lost. You know, it's gone. They, 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 they put bliss points in your food. So you're more addicted to the sugar <coughs> because it's good business. Because the companies that were honest and didn't do that are gone. The ones that were organic and honest and did good things, they got wiped out because the addiction of sugar is much more powerful than the honesty and integrity of good people who made organic food. That's the reality of the world we live in. And uh, that has to change. It has to shift because there's, you know, how much are we going to take? How much of a beating can the sheep stand before they buy enough? <laughs> where are all the lions come on so yeah no thanks todd and um we're coming up on 9 30 now so uh we'll have to wrap it up soon but you know thanks so much for sharing all this with the club and you know it's been really interesting and a really you know different look at you know every everything we've been learning about all year than you, anyone you guys, should be, you guys should be tuning into i have a live show on wednesdays uh, I'm doing. I'm finishing my movie right now, so my Thursdays and Saturday, Sunday videos haven't been coming out. But you guys can live interact with me on uh, on Wednesdays. I do those shows when I'm on expeditions. I'll do them every second week, but right now I'm doing them every week. And lots of good questions in there every week. Those live shows are amazing. They're they're a lot like this, except uh, you know probably a thousand questions going on. And I, I literally get maybe a quarter through. But get there early if you have questions. I love to answer. I like tough questions. If you're if you have tough questions, like hit me. Those ones, those, those are why I do these shows because that causes a paradigm shift until somebody asks me, Hey, why don't you just, why don't you go do Bigfoot research in a national park? You can't hunt them there. Oh, I'll go do them in a national park. Thanks. Thanks. 13 year old punk. <laughs> that just gave me an idea of how I can do Sasquatch research and not worried about my Sasquatch being hunted. Right. But that's literally how I made those decisions. And I literally, when someone asks me a powerful question, I am out in the field and I will go get that answer if I don't have it. Or maybe it'll push me to explore things I didn't think possible anymore. Like it's my live show that made me think, well, maybe they're not a male dominated society. Maybe they do have monogamous relationships and people had evidence to substantiate that. So now I'm going, okay, it's pushed my paradigm and I have to even go to percentages. There is a 30% chance they are living in monogamous relationships. And the rivet is, is evidence to substantiate that. So, um, you know, I, I love these live shows. I, I, I do this for a living. This is my job. So uh, people that are passionate about this discovery support me financially. And then I do TV shows and movies and uh, I do seminars, talk. So, uh, and it's, this is going to be a big year. What you're doing is keep pushing forward with this club and it's expanding for a reason The the, the knowledge is getting out there. The paradigm is getting broke and we do need young minds and help. We need help. So, and I'm here, you know, watch the movie discovering Bigfoot. I made that for you guys didn't make that to make money i didn't do that to to become famous i those things are the antithesis of what i represent i did it so you guys could watch it and learn it and go maybe go make the discovery it's that much information watch the survivor man bigfoot there's four episodes with me and there's the movie go watch those five things i put my heart and soul into those things there's a new movie coming out i'll put my my heart into that teaching as much as i can so so this discovery comes forward. So, because there are people that are incredibly gifted. And if it's you or somebody you know, goes out in the bush and goes, oh, hi, the Sasquatch comes and sits down. And it's like, man, I'm glad I watched that Discovering Bigfoot movie because I recognize the tree breaks. And man, they sure like me. Look, they took an apple. Here's a picture of me and a Sasquatch. Discovery done. Yay, that was the whole point. <laughs> so, and there are people that special and that gifted that, that can facilitate this way more advanced empathically, spiritually, whatever way needs to be intelligently than I am that can facilitate discovery. And I'm interested in attracting them to this because we need all the help and cooperation we can get. So, cause it's a, a lot to accomplish, but we're going to get it done. Yeah. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, no, it's just, um, it's just amazing work and that you're doing and 
Uh, I'm glad, you know, uh, you appreciate what we're doing here at the club because uh, it's, you know, it's so amazing every week, you know, I get messages from, you know, kids in the club and everything and, yeah. you know, saying how, you know, incredible it is what they're learning about and, yeah. and just things they didn't know before. And, you know, it's great that they're able to come and uh, learn this at a school and uh, we're able to get, you know, people like you out to, to talk to us that are really passionate about this and, and just know so much. Focus, focus on that positivity. Don't worry about the haters and the derogatory. Just keep, for me, I have so much positivity. I don't have time to look at the negative anymore. With yeah. you, you'll have to, you have to, you have to, because you'll get it. People will be ridiculous yeah. and say preposterous things to you. Remember, the world is round. And it doesn't matter how much flat earth evidence there is. You know what you know, right? Move forward. Have faith in what you know and what yourself is. And uh, you'll sleep well at night.